Think you may have a hormonal imbalance? Let's go through some of the signs and which particular hormone may be out of balance for you. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified every single time I post a new video on how to balance your hormones and improve your overall health naturally. What you will learn in today's video is absolutely critical when trying to balance your hormones as it is super hard to improve your health when you don't even know what's going wrong in the first place. Having an in-depth understanding of hormones has been absolutely life-changing in reversing my own PCOS, which is why as a biologist, I wrote a book about it and have taught over 200 women about their hormones and how to balance them naturally too. So when trying to narrow down which hormone may be out of balance for you, if any, it's important to note that there are many more hormones than just the reproductive ones. Hormones are the chemical messengers that decide everything you do from when you eat to when you sleep. So knowing the many factors that may be behind your symptoms can really help you in your healing journey. With that said, let's now go through the seven major signs indicating that you may have a hormonal imbalance. The first sign is quite obvious and this is absent periods, also known as amenorrhea. And this is defined as a girl who has not had a period by the age of 15 or a woman who has previously had a period but has not had a period for three cycles. So depending on your cycle length, that could be three months or it could be a little bit longer or a little bit less. There are a lot of steps that occur in the ovaries and in the uterus each cycle and it is the natural fluctuation of each hormone in each different time of the cycle that is responsible for each of these steps and eventually leading to a woman getting her period. Therefore, without her hormones balanced and fluctuating as they should, it is normal for a woman to not get her period at all. It is also important to note that the pill overrides these natural fluctuations of hormones with a set dose of synthetic hormones and therefore, contrary to what a lot of doctors tell their patients the pill does not actually balance out your hormones it just simply overrides them also when a woman on the pill gets her period this is not actually a true period but really a withdrawal bleed that is the result of the sugar pills not containing any of the synthetic hormone and so it is as a result of the withdrawal of hormones that you then bleed the pill was designed this way back in the 1900s to give the illusion that a woman was still having her natural cycle as the lack of women's rights actually opposed the idea of contraception. This leads us then into the second sign of a hormonal imbalance, and that is irregular periods. Now, to be really clear, your period does not need to be 28 days every month in order for it to be normal and regular. There are many factors that can alter the length of your cycle every single month, and it can also differ between person to person. What we're looking for here is relative consistency. For reference, a cycle anywhere between 21 and 35 days long can be considered normal with a period lasting around three to seven days. If your cycle is longer than 35 days or if your period is longer than seven days, then it is really important that you take action and go and get it checked out, especially if you are losing a lot of blood as it may mean that you are iron deficient. A normal amount of blood to lose each period is between 30 and 40 mils, though this is a lot easier to measure if you use a menstrual cup. If you'd like a video learning more about menstrual cups, then let me know down in the comments and I'll be sure to organize that one for you as well. Now, if you've just gone off the pill, don't stress if you don't get your period back straight away. It may actually take between three and 12 months. And this is just because your body has to learn its natural hormone fluctuations again. But even if you haven't been on the pill, if you have a hormonal imbalance or your hormones aren't working as they should, then an irregular period is a huge indicator of this. All right, let's move a little faster now. So sign number three that you may have a hormonal imbalance is a decreased sex drive. Just like your hormones, your sex drive should actually fluctuate throughout the month too. It should be the highest when you are fertile and it should be the lowest just before or during the start of your period. So why is it highest when we are fertile, aka around ovulation? That is because according to our bodies and the biology of living things, the whole point of being alive is to make babies and pass on our genes. Our hormones know this and work towards this mission, whether you are wanting a baby or not. Estrogen is the hormone that is responsible for the spike in your sex drive and estrogen is the highest right before ovulation, aka when you are fertile. So if you are finding that your sex drive is consistently low, then it may be because your hormones are not fluctuating as they are meant to. I also actually experienced a low sex drive whilst on the pill. 
Now, number four is the classic hormonal acne. Raise your hands if you have been personally victimized by hormonal acne. So the easiest way to tell if your acne is hormonal is whether it has a consistent pattern of showing up around your chin and around your jawline. Now, even though your acne may be hormonal, you can still get breakouts on other parts of your face. It isn't exclusively to this area, especially because you can also have a problem with your gut health and you can be stressed because of your hormonal acne. So it can have other factors that result in breakouts everywhere, but we're looking for the overall pattern. And if majority of your breakouts are around your jawline, then it is probably hormonal acne. Now, please, please, please hear me when I say this. It does not matter how many acne treatments you do or how much skincare you buy or how many antibiotics or the pill, different pills that you go on. If you do not treat the internal cause and balance your hormones naturally, then your acne will never clear for good and it will just keep on coming back. That's just how it works. And unfortunately, in the past, I learned the hard way too. This is why after a round of antibiotics or even Accutane, a lot of people notice that their acne starts coming back after a year or so, or even sooner. And that is simply because they didn't treat the root cause. Likewise, as we've discussed, keep in mind that hormonal contraceptives, so not just the pill, but also the marina and any other hormonal contraceptive does not actually balance your hormones and therefore will not actually fix your hormonal root cause internally. So Yes, it might clear your acne, but it's not actually getting rid of it. It's just suppressing everything and putting a Band-Aid over the top. Now, I'll be the first one to admit that that does definitely help your mental health and your self-esteem and the fact that you are struggling in the short term, but it just makes life harder because you end up struggling for longer. In other words, it's not a long-term fix like it is when you balance your hormones naturally. The main hormone behind acne is testosterone, which if you would like to learn more about, I talk about in this video here. Now, before we continue, I want to know if you can relate. Are you experiencing any of these symptoms? Does any of this sound familiar? Let me know down in the comments below. Okay, so number five is fatigue or just low energy in general. If you're experiencing this symptom, then it sounds like your cortisol levels may be out of balance, which is super common in today's modern world because of our poor work-life balance and exposing ourselves to our phone, TV, and computer screens well into the night. More serious adrenal conditions can affect the functioning of the thyroid, which plays a major role in metabolism, growth, and development of the human body and helps to regulate many body functions. Common adrenal conditions include Hashimoto's, hypothyroidism, Cushing syndrome, and Graves' disease, but there are many more. The sixth major sign that you may have a hormonal imbalance is unexplained weight gain, which is common in those with PCOS and diabetes due to the hormone in Insulin. insulin is responsible for our metabolism and the uptake of glucose into our cells. In other words, if your cells become insulin resistant, then it means that when insulin comes knocking, the cells will not hear it and therefore will not open their doors to allow glucose in. This means that your blood sugar levels will remain high and you will remain hungry and tired. This then also affects the metabolism of fats and results in weight gain. And the last major sign of a hormonal imbalance number seven is unusual hair growth. This includes either excess hair loss or the growth of dark thick hairs in unusual places for females, such as the chin, jawline, and cheeks. And don't worry, little light hairs or peach fuzz as they call it is totally normal. In fact, we actually have hairs all over our body to protect us and to keep us warm. So how does excess hair growth and hair loss have anything to do with a hormonal imbalance? Well, while women are still meant to have a little bit of testosterone, men obviously have much more. And these levels in men play a huge role in triggering puberty and obviously the production of sperm, but also maintaining their male features, which especially includes stimulating the growth of hair around the armpits and pubic areas. So in women with high testosterone levels, such as those with PCOS, these higher levels of testosterone can stimulate very similar hair growth in these areas, as well as around the jawline where men would usually grow grow a beard. 
So then why do women with a hormonal imbalance then lose hair at the same time? Actually, for the same reason, those male hormones, also known as androgens, also trigger the thinning of hair on the head. So essentially you begin to lose hair where you want hair and begin to grow hair where you don't want hair. Super confusing. I know. Now, it's important to note that a lot of these signs and symptoms overlap and often one hormone out of balance can cause many others to then go out of balance as well. So it is really important to work with a professional and someone who knows what they're doing and they can really help you piece together all of the pieces of the puzzle and work out which hormones are out of balance and help you to balance your hormones holistically. If you'd like to know more about your female body and hormones, then I encourage you to check out my Balance Your Hormones ebook. In the book, I teach you how to eat for your hormones, support your gut health, and restore your adrenals, as well as all of the other things that come with holistically and naturally balancing your hormones. If you liked this video, then make sure to like it below and subscribe, and be sure to check out this video next where I teach you all about testosterone. I've also linked a bunch of other resources in the description below. But that's all from me for today. I will see you in my next video next week.